moves, particularly on those uh, currency moves there. And we are joined by Stan Chanel from IG in Melbourne. Stan, great to see you as always. Yeah, what are we seeing in, in the moves uh, in the greenback ahead of the outcome from that FOMC meeting that's underway? Morning, Brady. Yeah, at the moment, it certainly seems like uh, traders are pairing back on uh, the shorts on uh, the, the US dollar. Uh, of course, uh, we did see a bit of a reversal in uh, the, the dollar index. So it had been testing 79 uh, for the past few sessions, and it was really showing a lot of signs of indecision. Uh, but uh, it managed to finally pull, push itself a bit higher, up 0.5% into that 79.63 range. Uh, of course, uh, this 80 level will be the level to look out for in the short term. Uh, but as it stands, of course, we've we already had uh, the first day of the FOMC meeting. Uh, there is that slight chance uh, that, uh, that the Fed will come out and uh, not be as dovish as the market was uh, positioned for. Uh, there is a slight chance they'll come out and say uh, they, they still expect tapering to begin by the end of the year, but uh, it will still be data dependent. And in that case, uh, that probably will see a bit of a reversal in the US dollar in the short term. Uh, so there are a, lo a lot of traders who are positioning themselves just to cover against that uh, slight chance that that will be uh, the outcome of the Fed meeting. But overall, it should give um, a bit of an insight into how uh, uh, the, the Fed feels about the recent uh, fiscal dramas in the US and uh, what they feel about um, the, the uncertainty going forward as well, given uh, January and February are both uh, key months for uh, the, US, the US fiscal front uh, with those deadlines extended. Um, and it just seems like it's a bit of a, a kick of the can down the road by the US government. So uh, it should be a very critical uh, meeting for, for uh, the US dollar this week and of course for the rest of the market as the US dollar tends to dictate uh, the pace of um, other currency moves and of course uh, ultimately how um, the rest of the risk space responds. Uh, fortunately for equities um, in the US, we did see a third straight uh, consecutive um, record because of um, some fairly positive earnings. And of course that optimism that perhaps uh, uh, the Fed's um, uh, not, no tapering decision will be um, around for a bit longer. And also, of course, the Bank of Japan, uh, two meeting tomorrow. Um, what have we been seeing in the US yen pair ahead of that, and how is that likely to impact the Nikkei today? Yeah, uh, the dollar yen was definitely the biggest beneficiary of uh, this uh, move uh, higher in the US dollar. Uh, we saw the pair manage to squeeze higher through that 98 level to about 98.28. So that was a very positive move, uh, very bullish indeed ahead of uh, the, the FOMC meeting and of course the BOJ meeting which is out tomorrow. Now the uh, probability of um, uh, a further strength in the US dollar will certainly be positive for Japan. Uh, but of course uh, there is also the issue of the BOJ meeting which uh, could deliver further stimulus uh, which a lot of uh, investors are hoping for just, just mainly to counter some of the recent weakness we've seen uh, in various matrix out of Japan. Uh, and, and if that's the case, then perhaps we'll see prolonged uh, yen weakness, which will be a double kicker for the pair and will help uh, the Nikkei rally into the end of the week. Uh, as it stands, we're actually looking at a 1.2% gain for um, the, the Nikkei to about 14,458. So it's looking for a very strong open and could uh, easily lead the region uh, higher today. Uh, of course, uh, that optimism that we'll see uh, some stimulus being announced uh, out of Japan will certainly be uh, positive for equities and positioning for, uh, for Japan as well, heading into uh, the decision tomorrow. Um, in terms of our market, the share market, we've got a good lead there from Wall Street, record highs for the Dow and the S&P 500. What do you think we'll see at the open? Yeah, absolutely. A very good lead indeed. Uh, we're currently looking at a half percent uh, gain to 5,449 at the open. Uh, now that puts that 5,457 level from uh, this week's high uh, firmly in, in focus. Uh, we're eyeing a bit of a reversal higher in uh, the, the resource space after a poor performance yesterday. Uh, BHP's ADR is actually pointing up 0.7%, so that sees it uh, erase some of the 1% plus uh, uh, in losses that it posted yesterday. Uh, but th there's still a lot of concerns for, for some of these resource names. In the short term, we actually had losses for uh, iron ore, which slid again to about 131.30. Uh, we had gold and uh, crude oil uh, both lower as well. So uh, there will be a lot of challenges for the resource um, names today. Um, the one, one, uh, one interesting one to watch would be Atlas Iron. They've got their AGM today. And of course, it's been one of the um, uh, biggest gainers in the iron ore space over the past few weeks. So that's certainly something to look out for today. Uh, we also have um, a, an AGM from Crown. Uh, we'll probably hear more 
uh, comments about their expansion strategy and of course that uh, uh, development in Sydney, the, the Bangaroo development in Sydney and exactly um, we, when we're expecting to, to see that come online and uh, the sort of progress that's being made out of that. Uh, we have um, a JB Hi-Fi AGM as well and uh, the, uh, the recent change in the sales environment will be interesting particularly following the recent rate cuts. So um, there's definitely quite a few um, company uh, related events to look out for uh, but of course uh, the banks will still be uh, the, the main uh, talking point with um, national bank reporting tomorrow and of course we'll probably see some positioning in NAB today uh, with a potential run-up heading into the results. Uh, of course we already saw ANZ deliver a blockbuster result so the pressure is all on NAB at the moment to deliver uh, and uh, should, be, should this be the case then we could see um, these banks continue to lead the market higher today. Yeah, it is going to be another big one. Thank you so much for that, Stan. Talk to you soon. Cheers, Brady. Stan Shamu there from IG in Melbourne. Stay with us coming up on First Business, the Japanese food giant Kirin snapping up a blocking stake in Warrnambool cheese. The takeover target, all the details next.